Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Soz and we are once again tracking ex-tropical Cyclone Lincoln as he marches across the Northern Territory in Western Australia. We're going to be taking a look at Lincoln's future forecast plus the signals in the Coral Sea for another tropical cyclone there. Things have changed a little bit for the better as well. And then we'll take a look at a more general look at the Australian weather. So starting things off with ex-tropical Cyclone Lincoln, the centre of the circulation located about here, it's very close to the Queensland Northern, um, the, the uh, Western Australian Northern Territory border rather, about, uh, I'd say about 70 kilometres to the southwest of Wave Hill and about 100 kilometres to the northeast of Balgo, just straight to the north of Docker River actually, and it looks like it's still dropping quite a bit of rainfall across parts of the Northern Territory, especially further towards the south and the southeast of the system. It looks like Tennant Creek has had a very wet night once again with up to 200 millimetres falling there, and this rainfall is going to continue throughout today, but it looks like it's going to mostly come in the form of pulse thunderstorms. The storm is stripped of a lot of convection right now, and it doesn't look like it's got any plans to fire up said convection uh, for quite a while. But if we were to take a look at the radar imagery um, over the next, uh, I'd say maybe six hours or the last six hours or so, you still can see there is a little bit of rainfall falling around the center of the system here. And considering this is quite a distance from a, a very solid radar, I would say there's some pretty significant rainfall rates still occurring over Halls Creek and that sort of area, and maybe extending up towards Argyle as well. And we could be seeing rainfall accumulations today approach 150 millimeters, parts of the Kimberley region with isolated pockets looking at 2 to 250 millimetres and that means that the risk of flash flooding and riverine flooding is there so if you do live in a flood prone area make sure that you do have things moved to higher grounds you've got livestock that are all safe and well and prepared for uh, some flooding like this if you've got machinery near a uh, possible flooding area then make sure you've got it out of the uh, flood zone because we could be seeing rivers go about one to two metres above the minor flooding alert uh, with the amount of rainfall that's expected to fall over the next 48 hours or so so now it's going to spend a long time over the northern parts of Western Australia. We will take a look at the rainfall forecast because it's more meaningful that we look at rainfall only as it moves across Western Australia. It's expected to re-emerge around here, just around Derby and Broome sort of area by around Thursday morning. So it's got about three days over Western Australia for, um, to dump sort of just ridiculous amounts of rainfall and it really takes its time. It gets close to the uh, coastline by around next Wednesday and Thursday. Thursday, but it really doesn't re-emerge off the coastline and this rainfall really doesn't ease off till about Wednesday evening, early Thursday morning or so. And that also means we're going to be seeing a lot of rainfall fall across parts of the Northern Territory. In fact, over the next three days, be expecting about two to 250 millimetres in quite a few locations, especially where the system is uh, located right now. It's going to have this big inflow feature, I guess, towards the southern side of it, um, which will be just a big string of thunderstorms streaming into the system. So for these areas here, which have already received a lot of rainfall there is the chance that the flooding will continue here um, I think rainfall yesterday wasn't as bad as what it was initially forecast but still uh, with the amount of rainfall that's still yet to come up to 200 millimeters or so there could be some significant flooding um, in parts of the Northern Territory as well. Now we'll switch back to the wind forecast because it's after Thursday that we really have to start worrying about the wind forecast for this system. The Eastern BF and the Access G3 model are very similar in terms of wind speeds as it re-emerges off the WA coastline and also pretty similar in terms of whereabouts. So the forecast until about Thursday morning is, I dare I say, set in stone. It's very, very easy to uh, say what's gonna happen until Thursday. It's gonna be tracking over the Kimberley region, rainfall and maybe some isolated damaging Winds for Broom, Fitzroy Crossing, Halls Creek, um, Mornington Homestead up towards Kununurra, maybe even Columba Ruin, um, what is it, Truscott as well, um, as a result of this system's passage. But after Thursday, there's just a little bit more uncertainty. We're pretty, um, pretty happy with the forecast of this is going to become a relatively strong system, maybe a severe tropical cyclone as it approaches the West Australian coastline. We're now looking at Friday evening at this point. You can see we've got a severe tropical cyclone moving just towards the west of Barra Island. And it looks like it's going to go straight into Exmouth and the Little Gulf next to Exmouth um, as what looks to be a severe tropical cyclone here. It's going to make landfall as peak intensity as well. The Eastern Blue has been saying that this is going to happen for the past, oh, I dare I say, maybe about four or five days at this point. They are very confident in this situation. We see a severe tropical cyclone make landfall between Coral Bay and Onslow. The other forecast models, especially the Access G3 and the Icon model, which I'll show you in just a little bit, aren't too certain. The GFS is sort of more on board with the Eastern 
Leuf scenario while I'm at it. Um, but again, they, they haven't called for a strong tropical cyclone yet. So I think the GFS model might need to be discarded until we see a reason for them to call for a weak tropical cyclone like they have. And then through Saturday, it'll move deeper into the, I would say, the Gascoigne region of Western Australia towards Mekathar and Mad, uh, Mount Magnet. And it should completely miss Perth and Geraldton and these uh, larger population centres on the West Australian coastline down towards Bunbury. But it looks like it's going to go right through the Gascoigne, maybe the extreme northern parts of the Wheat Belt as well. They might get impacted by some damaging winds and heavy rainfall. And it's going to travel through the goldfields and deliver quite a lot of rainfall there as well, especially towards the southern side of the system. It's going to be very rainfall dominant on the southern side. It'll be showers and strong thunderstorms as well, uh, Saturday and Sunday into the gas coin and into the gold fields. And this is where we look at rainfall accumulations over the next 10 days, approaching 25 to 50 millimeters for these locations. And this is much needed rainfall as well. This is necessary rainfall for the gold fields and also some parts of the extreme eastern wheat belt as well around Meriden and down towards Hyden. Looks like Hyden might just miss out on the rainfall as well. Uh, but yeah, for the gas coin and the gold fields, this rainfall is desperately needed there. They really haven't had a start to the wet season yet. I know the remnants of, I think, I think it was X tropical site. Oh no, it was an X tropical low. Uh, tropical low zero five U came through Waluna and Lanister and Leverton, but it looks like that um, track that that took that drenched uh, much further inland sort of locations. And this one's going to uh, concentrate more on the uh, western parts of the goldfields and the gas coin as well. Really confusing uh, me. All these little regions that I can remember. Um, but yeah, because it's going to be a fast moving system, rainfall doesn't look to be the major threat from this system. Still though, 150, 200 millimeters for Exmouth, that's nearly a year's worth of rainfall. It's nothing to shy away from. The good news is that we've had uh, a significant drop in the peak wind forecast. Yesterday, we we're looking at 250 kilometer an hour wind gusts. I thought this would happen. I thought the models would call for a big drop in peak wind gusts and they have 165 kilometers an hour or so for Exmouth. That's still a very strong wind gust and it will cause significant damage to unprepared homes and unprepared property as well. Um, but if you were to um, keep looking at the forecast, I really want to see some congruency between the Eastern Rebef and the Access G3 model before I call for a location to prepare for in terms of a landfall site. But I'm not going to do that right now. It's still about five days away, but still 165 kilometer an hour winds is something that you need to be prepared for. I imagine the Bureau of Meteorology will be watching this system very closely. What I fear is that they're not going to start issuing warnings until about a day and a half in a advanced because it's only going to spend about a day and a half over water and the Bureau of Meteorology's policy is that they don't warn systems or well, they do warn tropical lows and so forth but they don't tr start tracking systems until they're either a formed at tropical low which this system won't be until it gets itself overland or a fully fledged tropical cyclone which this system will take its time to get up to. It will be rapidly intensifying but I don't think the Bureau of Meteorology is going to be giving residents along the uh, Pilbara and the Gascoigne region as much warning as they deserve because for a tropical cyclone like this where you're looking at a severe tropical cyclone you definitely need a day's warning and probably two days as well um so yeah, that, that's a little bit of a concern here. Tomorrow, I promise I'll have details on a landfall site for this system. So make sure you are subscribed for that. We'll just quickly take a peek at the GFS model, but they are, they're really weird in what they're forecasting. They're hardly calling for a cyclone at all. Peak wind gusts up to and maybe not even reaching 90 kilometers an hour if it makes landfall on Carnarvon and Coral Bay near uh, Shark Bay. So this is really not a system to be concerning about as per the GFS forecast. The access model has been calling for a stronger and stronger system by the day. Um, if we were to go back to about Wednesday when the system re-emerges off the Kimberley coastline and start playing this model run through, you can see the access calls for rapid intensification even though this system really does hug the coastline of the uh, Pilbara region before it makes a landfall on what looks like maybe, oh, that's right next to uh, Caratha and Port Hedland, so it will definitely give Port Hedland the worst conditions. But we're still looking at peak wind speeds here approaching 150, 165 kilometers an hour or so. In fact, maybe 175 kilometers an hour. So a very similar peak intensity from the Eastern BF model and a very similar peak intensity with the Access G3 model between those two. Um, which is very good news. We know how strong the system is going to be, probably category two or category three strength. It will be rapidly intensifying right up towards landfall. Again, we're just not 100% sure where the landfall will be. Right now, expect it between Coral Bay and Port Hedland, but it could be a, it could be anywhere between those two. So if you do live between Coral Bay and Port Hedland, especially Exmouth and Onslow and that sort of area, maybe even up towards Caratha as well, I would probably start thinking that there is a tropical cyclone that's going to come in maybe 
Friday evening, early Saturday morning. So take some preparation such as getting bottled water ready, getting enough fuel for your generator ready, definitely enough beers uh, to get yourself through this system because it will be quite a strong one uh, by the looks of things. Um, but yeah, just do some little things that can uh, save you time from the big preparation in advance from this tropical cyclone. I know homes are built up here to withstand strong systems because I mean they get them basically every year uh, but still a category three that will blow the trampoline out of the backyard that will make an absolute mess of your deck chairs and so forth uh, so yeah make sure you are taking this system very seriously as it comes ashore because a category two it isn't a nothing system especially because it will definitely be on the higher end of category two status if it is a category two strength system and just uh, for fun let's take a look at the icon model it's a slightly stronger system than the access g3 model but still negligible change in wind speeds but it's very very similar in terms of a landfall location between the Access G3 and the Icon forecast model. So I am now starting to lean more towards the landfall between Caratha and Port Hedland as sort of a final location to hone in for a forecast landfall. But again, I've still, the Eastern Relief's consistency with Xmouth is throwing me off from really highlighting this as a landfall location. But by Tuesday, definitely by Wednesday, I'll know exactly what to call for a landfall site. And same with the Bureau of Meteorology, hopefully as well. And you'll start to see the Cyclone Icon appear on the forecasts for parts of the Pilbara. That is enough chatting about this system here. It's going to be a big one. It's going to be probably the strongest landfall that we received this cyclone season. Definitely, hopefully, the strongest landfall that we received this cyclone season nationwide. We'll now go and take a look at the system in the Coral Sea because it does look like things have changed significantly. We're no longer looking at this high chance of a cyclone appearing right on the Queensland coastline. But I would argue that this is almost a worse uh, situation that the GFS calling for a tropical low to kind of develop itself just offshore, maybe around the Coral Sea um, Island sort of adjacent to the Great Barrier Reef. But I mean, if you look at the rainfall system, uh, the rainfall from the system, that's a lot of rainfall that's going to be falling over the next 10 days. We're looking at up to two to 300 millimetres for Cairns down towards Innisfail, Tully and Cardwell. Um, and I mean, the GFS model, it's a low resolution model. It really struggles to predict these fine details of rainfall, especially on the mountains through here. So dare I say up to six or 700 millimetres could fall if this situation was to materialise. Thankfully though, it doesn't look like there's too much congruency with this forecast. Um, the access in the eastern we are still calling for up to 100 or 150 millimetres of rain to fall, but because the tropical low forms a lot further out to sea and it looks like it's also substantially weaker than the GFS's forecast, the rainfall does miss the Queensland coastline for the most part. But again, this does look like something the Queensland coast should be looking at. So once again, the Coral Sea system, as it was yesterday, it remains something to watch. It doesn't remain something to be prepared for or to be worried about, but it definitely remains a system that we should be watching quite closely. I'm going to be providing daily coverage on this storm. It might form, it might not. I'm erring on the side of it not forming at this point and it's probably going to have its chances absolutely obliterated tomorrow or the next day considering models just have a tendency to kill these systems off quite randomly. Still a long way out in the future. Now, we do have a thunderstorm situation developing, I think it's next or later this week and into next weekend for New South Wales and Queensland as well. There'll be dedicated updates on this system, but it looks like we're gonna get some kind of a cold front move through. And in front of that, we'll see this trough line that really promotes thunderstorm activity Saturday evening through Northern New South Wales and into Southeastern Queensland as well. And these look like some pretty nasty thunderstorms as well by the looks of things. Very uh, strong storm cells. Uh, looks like these could actually be supercell thunderstorms as well as they move through. So this is a bit of a concerning forecast because these are some very strong thunderstorms and also reciprocated on the Eastern Relief model as well by the looks of things. And the GFS, no, the GFS doesn't have anything. So again, we'll be watching this quite closely on the forecast. And if it does become a system uh, to be concerned about, then there will be updates and coverage on this channel. Anyways, that is the latest that I have on the, well, I guess the Australian weather picture. We've got a system that is of big concern up in Western Australia. There will be updates coming out on that very consistently. Um, probably starting with twice daily updates tomorrow even. Anyways, that is all that I have time for today. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.